David Lyon is Professor Emeritus, former director of the Surveillance Studies Center at Queen's University and principal investigator of Shirk Partnership Project on Big Data Surveillance. Hello, my name is David Lyon. My book is called P Pandemic Surveillance. So what do I mean by this term, pandemic surveillance? Well, firstly, I'm referring to the public health devices, apps and systems that were surveillance that were used to track and to trace those who may have been exposed to infected others, and also others to model, map and visualize the direction that COVID-19 is taking. It's the wristbands required in Hong Kong, digital contact tracing in many other countries from China's health code through uh, India's Arogya Setu and onto the Apple Google API that enabled other contact tracing systems to be set up in a decentralized way in many countries around the world. And these may be backed by drones, uh, facial recognition and other techniques as well. But the large scale data platforms, on the other hand, were made for analysis, that is, analysis to guide public health decisions, the lockdowns and the mask wearing and now vaccine passports or certificates that underlie the controls that we all experience for better or worse. So that's one meaning. The second meaning is pandemic surveillance is about the massive, unprecedented surveillance surge seen above all in the domestic space. The billboards and the bus signs said, stay home, stay safe. So we stayed home, which did keep us relatively safe from the virus, but not from the targeted assault from the platforms that make billions from data sucked out of our homes. Ironically, the home was once seen as the bastion of privacy, but as we worked, studied and shopped and were entertained at home, our data was gathered, analyzed and used as never before. Monitoring of employees working from home included some very intrusive and actually quite surreptitious measures. Students at home had both their attendance and their attention uh, checked remotely, especially at examination time. And online shopping reached new levels with corporations such as uh, the Amazon, the global giant, making multi-billion profit leaps. And then three, pandemic surveillance also just suggests some accurate wordplay, a pandemic of surveillance, as extracting sensitive personal data went viral, becoming an economic growth point. Zoom's re revenue, for example, skyrocketed more than 350% per quarter uh, in 2020 and 2021. Many surveillance systems, some government, many commercial, were established in haste as technical solutions to problems thrown up by the pandemic. This really was the biggest surveillance surge ever, and we're still in it. So my book explores these three understandings of pandemic surveillance and goes beyond description to look at some of the meanings of what has been happening on both an infrastructural and an everyday cultural level. Major questions are raised not just about privacy and data protection, but about the unequal distribution of surveillance and the ways that surveillance can operate through social sorting to increase the disadvantages experienced by those who are already marginalized in some way. And these include especially people in poverty, uh, visible minorities, indigenous people, prisoners, migrants, and so on. But it also has significant implications for democracy and power that I also discuss, especially the vital question of what will happen to all these pop-up surveillance devices, apps and platforms after the pandemic has subsided. Remember that much surveillance initiated for uh, security purposes after 9-11 is still in place, despite sunset clauses in the legislation. Is this new wave of surveillance going to go the same way? As I see it, however, there are also opportunities for a change of direction, and I give some examples of other ways forward. Uh, I use civil society examples from Brazil and Taiwan, for example. Ways forward that make not just for more regulation, and that, I confess, is very badly needed, but for different purposes. Surveillance calibrated to the common good, uh, to human flourishing, and to data justice. 
uh, I argue that there is a doorway to hope here.